Hello, greetings to everybody. So this is a recorded video discussion on the continuation of the democratic intervention. As we go, uh, as we go to our discussion last meeting, you have learned about the difference of the trends and fans and fads, and also the characteristics and their elements. So how this trends and fads differ from one another. So as trends. Uh, uh, being being you know emerged in our society today one of the common factors that uh, trends are starting to emerge is because of the democracy now when we talk about the democratic intervention from the term itself ano ba ang kinalaman ng demokrasya sa mga nagaganap sa paligid natin ngayon now to further discuss this one there are also some terms that you have to know or mga ibang mga ilang term, term terminologies na babalikan ninyo nung napag-aralan niyo yung inyong Polgov when you were grade 11. So let's continue. Let me share my screen. There you go. Now the democratic intervention on this on this manner, no? Um Let's also talk about what is democracy ba muna? Ano, ano ba ang uh, naaalala ninyo nung napag-aralan nyo ang demokrasya as one of the forms of, gover of the government nung sa polygov ninyo? So commonly, when we talk about the democracy, it's about freedom. Yan ang normally naman na may iisip ng isang estudyante o ng isang normal na mamamayan na kapag ka sinabing demokrasya, there's a freedom. But what really democracy means? No? What is democracy? Now, as you can see on your screen, democracy came from the two Greek words, okay? The demos, which means the people, and the other one, the Cretean, which means to rule. Okay? Now, to combine these two terminologies, democracy means rule by the people. Now, um, democracy literally means ruled by the people by the people from the terminology itself. It is important to note that originally democracy was not perceived to be the best form of the government. Why? Having its popularity as its criterion, these two have, you know, they have um, debated on this one. The, on, the, on the left side, as you can see on your screen, um, according to, you know, um, Aristotle, he claimed that uh, democracy, I don't know, this is Plato on the left side, he claimed that democracy is not the best for the government because one of its criteria is the popularity. Sabi niya, popularity lang naman eh, ang isa sa mga basihan sa demokrasya. No? Ayan, ang, ayan ang pananaw ni Plato. While on the other hand, uh, on, on this right side, which is the uh, which is Aristotle, no? who is Aristotle and uh, the, the student of Plato, he argued that democracy is one of the three acceptable degenerate forms of government. Because according to him, it was only accepted during the Enlightenment period. No, kung babalikan nyo yung history, it was accepted widely when uh, during the Enlightenment period that the perception on the democracy transformed into a positive note. Because before, nung wala pang Enlightenment period or on, on yung mga old ages pa natin, they believe that uh, democracy is just about popularity. But uh, Aristotle argued that it's not it's not only about the popularity, but uh, it can also be transformed into positive connotation that this involves the people as part of the uh, decision makers sa government. No? Today, one of the common examples that uh, uh, the countries nowadays who, uh, who uses this kind of government or this form of government or have adopted this form of government is the Philippines. You, you, you all know that, that our country today is uh, in a democratic form. However, the United States waged a number of wars under the banner of democracy. And it, it's, it's common to you guys that um, U.S. is isa sa naging basihan ng uh, Pilipinas no? patungkol sa demokrasya. Okay, so these two have 
shared their perspective in terms of democracy. Plato and Aristotle. Now, there are elements of, of democracy, of the modern democracy. Okay? Now, the modern democracy today, as practiced in many countries all over the world, it is compromised of six fundamental elements. The following. These are the following. The rule of law, the separation of uh, powers, the basic rights and freedom, the suffrage and the freedom of speech, and last one, the pluralism. The pluralism. I'm sorry. So let's let's talk about first the rule of law. Now, when when we talk about the rule of law, it states that the heart of any democratic government is about you know this quote and quote no one is above the law, meaning to say, sa mata ng batas lahat ay pantay pantay, walang mayaman, walang mahirap. In this sense, all citizens stand as equal in the eyes of the law. The, you know, um, it ensures, yung rule of law, ha, it ensures that the rights and freedoms of citizens are protected. That nobody can be above the law. But what is really happening nowadays? In, in our society nowadays, no? um, it is somehow not being exercised. Sa panahon ngayon, you cannot achieve justice if you don't have this one. Walang pera, di ba? Kung hindi ka kilala, kung wala kang impluensya, hanggang saan or paano mo makakamit ang hustisya. It's very impossible for a normal citizen, lalo na kung isa kang mahirap, na makamit ang hustisya. So do you think that the rule of law was being exercised as one of the elements of the modern democracy in our society today. Come to think of it. Reflect on that question. No? Isang bilang isang isang uh, Pilipino, no? isang mamamayan ng ating bansa. Okay? However, let's talk about the separation of powers. The second one. No? Under this, the uh, separation of powers, of course, this involves the three branches of the government. If, if you will go back take a look back on your politics and governance, um, the three branches of the government are legislative, executive, and then the judiciary. Of course, each branches have their own power. The executive power, the legislative power, and then the judiciary power. Since, as I have discussed, the rule of law safeguards the equality within the state, the separation of powers ensures the provisions of checks and balances. Ano ba yung pagkakadistribute ng mga kapangyarihan per branches of the government? So, ano ba yung ganap ni executive? Ano ba yung executive power na tinatawag? Sa executive branch, you all aware that it involves the president, the vice president, and then the cabinet members. Being, the, being, being part of the cabinet members, these are the secretaries. And the cabinet members stands as the advisor of the president. Okay? So the executive power vested in the, in the executive department, they are responsible for the implementation of law. Or just simply remember the term implementation. So, tagapagpatupad ng batas. No, hang, hanggat na, uh, hang, uh, kapag uh, ang isang batas mula sa kongreso ay natapos ang pagdinig, ang huling uh, sagot dyan or ang huling, ang, ang, ang huling pasya ay nasa uh, Pangulo. Ano? Or kung dumaan na ito sa judiciary power, uh, sa judiciary department na na-interpret na siya, then that is the time na pipirma ang Pangulo. Ngayon, kung pumirma ang Pangulo, isa na siyang ganap na batas. Pero kung hindi pa pumipirma ang Pangulo, ang tawag dito ay isa palang bill. Okay? However, the, the legislative power vested in the legislative uh, uh, branch of the government, I mean the legislative department, they are responsible for the creation of law. And going back to your Paul Gov, the legislative involves the two um, houses, the upper house and then the lower house, or the upper chamber and then the lower chamber. Whereas the upper cha chamber is the Senate of the Philippines. And then the lower chamber or the lower house is the House of the Representative. Ito yung mga kongresista natin. And then yung Senate, it involves the 
senators. Okay? So, anong ganap nila? Creator. Creation of the law. Taggagawa. Okay? Now, um, the judiciary power, which is vested on the judiciary department, they are responsible for the interpretation of law. They are the one who, in, who will interpret those bill. No? Kaya maririnig ninyo sa balita, di ba? Minsan, binasura ng Korte Suprema. So, once na binasura nila yon, hindi na inaakyat sa Pangulo para pirmahan maging, maging, upang maging ganap na batas. Okay? So, the Judiciary Department involves the courts. No? Nandiyan yung mga, mga, mga Chief Justice natin. Nandiyan so, saan ang, uh, ang Court of Appeals, ang Sandigan Bayan. So, sila ang mga, uh, mga departamento na involved sa ating Judiciary Branch of the Government. Okay. What about this presidential system, the parliamentary system, and then the mixed systems? As you can see on your screen. This three are the pattern or the, the you know, um, these are the patterns involved in the uh, democratic government. But before the mixed systems involved, there are only two. Yung nauna lang, yung presidential system and then the parliamentary system. Ano bang pagkakaiba-iba ng tatlo na yan? Okay, isa-isahin natin. Let's start with the presidential system. Okay? When we talk about the presidential system, the citizens elect a president who serves as the head of the state and the government. So katulad sa bansa natin, um, we, as a citizen of, the, of, of our country, we participate in the election process. No? Mag-elect tayo ng pangulo natin. Now the legislative power is distinct from the executive power on this uh, presidential on this presidential system ha magkaiba ang ganap ni executive at saka ni legislative si leg si legislator legislator o yung mga legislators natin they passes the bill that the president sign into the law as i have mentioned a while ago then approves the national budget and decides on the national policies and decides or any other you know uh, procedures or the rule or the the rulings na i, na ipapasa or uh, gagawin ng ng kongreso ng mga legislators natin now uh, some of the functions ng eg ng ehekutibo sa tagalog ano sa filipino they include the ensuring of the laws and policies are being enforced na ipapatupad with you know strict implementation and the president acts the president acts as the chief uh, the commander in chief ng uh, kapulisan no the or the armed, or armed forces of the philippines so in the in the philippines we are using this one the presidential system okay so we are one of the common examples na presidential system now the second one Definitely, we are not using with this one, the parliamentary system. Sino ba yung mga, or ano-ano bang mga bansa ang merong parliamentary system? Ang common ni dyan, malalaman nyo na parliamentary ang ginagamit nila kapag prime minister ang tawag sa kanilang leader. Alright? Now, um, when we talk about the, the, the parliamentary system, there are a lot of countries na gumagamit ng par parliamentary system. Mag hindi sila presidential. At kung maaalala ninyo sa Pilipinas, ito ay parang sinusulong nila. Kasi halimbawa sa charter change, uh, yung chacha na tinatawag. Yung chacha kasi na tinatawag, once na nagkaroon ng charter change, probably the, the Philippines could be turned into a parliamentary system or a mixed system. So mamaya malalaman nyo na ba yung mixed system. Sa, in, sa, sa parliamentary system, the citizens, okay, yung mga mamamayan, they elect the members of the parliament. Okay? They elect the members of the parliament. Now, the party that wins the majority seat in the parliamentary elects the prime minister. Okay? So, halimbawa, nag-elect na ang taong bayan ng mga membro ng parliament. Yung, yung partido na nanalo ng majority 
ay sila ang mag elect ng Prime Minister. Definitely, si Prime Minister was not being elected by the citizens. Kundi, they are, uh, he or she was being elected by the members of the parliament. You get my point? Unlike sa, sa presidential, magkaiba. No, sa atin, tayo mismo ang mag elect ng ating mga mga uh, uh, political, you know, I mean, yung mga nakaupo ngayon sa gobyerno. Pero dito sa ating uh, uh, parliamentary system, the, par- the members of the parliament, they are the one who elect the prime minister. All right. So, the prime minister, anong ganap ni prime minister? They serve, he or she serve as the head of the government. Okay? He or she serve as the head of the government or the head of the state. Like for example, isa sa mga bansa na merong prime minister ay ang England. So, yung head ng royal family ay head of the state and prime minister is the head of the government because you know the the England uh, nandito ang, ang royal family right so there are also a lot of um uh, uh, countries na parliamentary system so long as the the head of the government is known as prime minister okay that is the hint kapag a presidential system president kapag a parliamentary system prime minister What about the mixed system? When we talk about the mixed system, it's a combination of presidential system and then the parliamentary system. So that's only the definition of the mixed system. So pinag pinag uh, sama. In mixed system, like the the the, the countries France and Russia, again, this is a combination of presidential and parliamentary, or this is also known as the semi-presidential system. So, how could this be possible? The uh, a president is or does not have any ceremonial function. While the prime minister as the as one of the head of the state, they function or they both share in the executive power. So, pareho silang merong share, si president at si prime minister. Now, what happens sa legislature? Sa legislature, si President at saka si par- Prime Minister, they are also responsible in, in taking the legislature or the legislative power. Okay? Ngayon, si President, sa executive naman, meron siyang kapangyarihan na mag-appoint ng cabinet member. Okay? Yung mga, mga secretary ng mga department. Si Prime Minister naman, also work with the cabinet. Okay? Pero ang may kapangyarihan na mag-appoint ay ang presidente. Si prime minister naman, he is just doing a collaborative work or or uh, he is working with the cabinet members or yung mga secretaries ng mga department. So, ano example ng mixed system? In France, Russia. And there are a lot of countries pa. No? So, that is the separation of power. Paano ba nag-work yung different branches ng government sa bawat iba't ibang uh, uh, democratic patterns such as the presidential system, the parliamentary system, and also the mixed system. Okay? Now, the third basic uh, uh, element of the modern democracy is the basic rights and freedom. Well, let's talk about first the rights. What are these rights na tinatawag? So, it was being classified into three. Namely, the human rights, the civil rights, and the political rights. What are the differences of these three? So, the human rights. Maybe some of you are, are advocate of the, the human rights nowadays. Kasi nga, ang dami mga nababiolate ngayon uh, patungkol sa karapatang pantao. No? So, kung kung i- i- itatranslate natin siya sa, Pilip- sa Filipino, yung karapatang pantao na tinatawag. Ano-ano ba yung mga karapatang pantao na tinatawag? This includes the right to live freely ano pa the right to uh, be secured the right to life okay karapatang mabuhay and even the right to education okay so commonly uh, the human rights are being included or or this following are being included in the bill of rights 
Yeah, sa Bill of Rights. So the human rights, uh, isa sa mga ahensya ng gobyerno ang nag-aasikaso dyan ay ang Commission on Human Rights. Okay? So that's the human rights. And what about the civil rights? From the term civil, it's about the property. The right to property, the right to enjoy the, priv the privileges according to uh, a citizen in a particular country. Ano ba yung mga property natin na tinatawag? Halimbawa, yung mga real estate uh, properties ninyo. Meron kayong uh, uh, mga lupain. Ano? ano pa yung mga property na, na mga property, mga examples ng property could be your your possession. Yung mga ari-ari ninyo. Okay? So, that falls under the civil rights. Kaya karaniwan, di ba kapag nagkakaroon ng mga kasuhan, uh, isa yung mga, mga civil cases kasi may mga kinalaman ito sa mga property, yung mga damage to property. Halimbawa, yung mga kotse, yung mga motor. Halimbawa, nakasagasa kayo or you are being, you know, naka, nabunggo kayo. Yan, doon pumapasok yung sa may civil rights. Now, what about the political rights? Uh, the political rights mainly engages on the right of every individual to vote or being involved to the right to suffrage or their capacity or their right to run in the government offices. May mga karapatan yung tumakbo dahil bawat, bawat mamaya, mamamayan hanggat pasok ka sa qualifications to run in the government office ay pwede kang tumakbo. No? Ngayon, ano ba yung mga qualifications sa atin kasi kung sa konstitusyon natin ay madali lang eh. No? Actually, uh, kung pagbabasihan, kung nakalagay doon, ay isa sa mga mga main uh, basic requirement na ay kailangan, Filipino citizen ka. But one of the uh, politicians na na or uh, government or no the, the people people servant no uh, yung manilik manilingkod ay I, I do not call somebody in the government as politician kapag ka nasa puso niya ang paglilingkod kasi i normally call them public administrator or servant public servant why who is this person that I usually call public servant whenever I feel a certain people from the government na na merong integrity at merong uh, puso talaga para sa tao at hindi pinapaira lang personal na uh, intensyon. Ang tawag ko sa kanila public servant or public administrator. Miriam Defensor Santiago. Knowing her, one of uh, sinabi niya sa kanyang uh, kampanya dati na ang isang taong tatakbo mula sa pinakamataas na posisyon ay dapat moral, merong mga iba't ibang klase ng category, no? Moral excellence, academic excellence. Ano? Ah, uh, pag sinabi nating academic excellence, ang sinasabi niya, ah, uh, matalino. Okay? You were able to impart knowledge to your countrymen sa pamamagitan ng nalalaman mo, no? Kasi ang bawat leader ay matalino, na ba? Kung uh, isang leader ay alam ang kung ano ang ginagawa niya o knowledgeable enough, then definitely the countrymen will not suffer. Diba? Hindi, hindi nagtatesting ng, ng waters. No? You are not, hindi ka suntok sa buwan kasi alam mong ginagawa mo. What about yung professional excellence? The professional excellence, this is the professionalism. How are you going to act in front of the people with the delicadesa nga na tinatawag? No? How are you going to, to present the nation professionally? And one of the, the, the most important according to, uh, to Miriam Defensor is yung moral excellence. Ano naman yung moral excellence? According to her, hindi lang naman daw puro ito. Pero may kasama nito. The moral excellence. So, it doesn't matter na kung gano'ng kakatalino pero wala ka namang puso. It doesn't equate yung, yung pagiging totoo mong manilingkod. Ang sabi niya, mahalaga pa rin na meron kang takot sa Diyos, meron kang pagpapahalaga sa taong bayan, sa karapatan ng mamamayan, may puso ka para sa tao. So, it should be balanced according to her. And I, I really agree to that. no? But, you know, you have your own perspective on the qualifications of a true servant na tatakbo sa government sometimes. And I hope ay isa kayo doon sa 
pusong may paglilingkod para sa tao, yung true public servant na tinatawag. Alright? So again, the human rights, the civil rights, and then the political rights. Now, let's proceed to another element of the modern democracy. We have the suffrage. And suffrage falls under the Article 5 of the Philippine Constitution. So the suffrage, this is your right to vote. The right to suffrage, this is the right of every citizen to be involved or to be recognized as part of the, the state or the of the, the of the country. Ito yung karapatan natin na bumoto or to run in the government offices. So it was being derived from the civil and political rights. Doon sa binanggit ko kanina, no na una. Uh, sa nauna natin na pinag-usapan. Um, the right to suffrage means, as you can see on your screen, that every citizen within the recognized legal age, okay, the legal age, which is 18, has the right to participate in the elections by casting a vote. And uh, sa atin, uh, it does not only naka-anchor sa yung election yung 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 typical election na alam ninyo na boboto ka ng ganito ng ng senators but there are also other forms of election process halimbawa yung plebiscito ano pa other referendum okay so say so normally the plebiscite it's about yes or no ah uh, example nito ito yung kakaibang uri ng botohan ano it's about pagbobotohan yung decision halimbawa merong hahatiin na na barangay. This happens sa Kanumay East at sa Kanumay West as, as an example. No? Gamitin ko lang example. Nagkaroon ng plebiscito noon. Dati kasi ang Kanumay ay uh, isa sa mga malalaking barangay sa Valenzuela at hindi pa magkahiwalay ang Kanumay East at ang Kanumay West. Ngayon, nung nagkaroon ng plebiscito, ay ito, ay, is, ito ay pinagbotohan ng mga mamamayan ng dalawang barangay. Kung ikaw ay sumang-ayon, bumoto ka ng yes, ibig sabihin, magiging separate ang barangay Kanumay West at Kanumay East. Ngayon, kung nanalo ang no, definitely ang Kanumay ay isang barangay pa rin. No? So, it's considered as Kanumay, barangay Kanumay. But uh, dahil ngayon na nanalo ang yes, magkahiwalay na ang Kanumay East at ang Kanumay West. So doon nagkaroon ng partisipasyon ng taong bayan sa pagdedesisyon kung dapat ba o ba ang mamamayang tao sa pag sa pag pagbubukod uh, or paghihiwalay ng uh, uh, mag, ng Kanumay East at Kanumay West bilang magkaibang barangay. So yun yung isa lamang sa mga halimbawa. Now let's proceed to another, the freedom of speech. Okay? So the freedom, as we have talked about kanina, no? yung, yung basic rights and freedom, when we talk about the freedom kasi in our society, or in our in our country, it involves the freedom of speech, the freedom of uh, worship, and freedom of association. No, the, the, the worship, it's about the religion that you are free to, to, in, to be involved in, in a different religious organization. Now, the, about the freedom of association, it's about you know, uh, the affiliation. Now, uh, in terms of the freedom of speech, commonly it's one of the common issues nowadays. Um, yung kalayaan sa pamamahayag. The freedom of, of, of speech, as you can see on your screen, it ensures that the citizens are about or having the, the voice or the capability to voice out their agreement, their disagreement, their affirmation, yung criticism, at yung mga kinaing sa government o yung mga nais nating i-propose sa, go sa gobyerno natin. Ngayon, sa society natin today, meron tayong kala kalayaan na maghayag ng sarili natin sa looben. Kaya that, dito, hindi bawal ang pagrarali. Uh, kung mapunta kayo sa Department of Justice, dati dyan ako nag-OJT, nag, uh, nag-on-the-job training. Every morning, ay ang almusal ko doon ay rally. Papasok ka, may rally sa harap, uuwi ka, may rally din sa harap ng gate ng DOJ. So, kabilaan doon ang, ang rally dyan sa mga tapat-tapat ng mga ahensya ng government. No? But that is one of the um, scenario na na-experience na ko that we really express our, our uh, point of views, our agreement and disagreement sa mga nangyayari sa ating 
gobyerno sa ating kapaligiran sa mga isinasa batas nila. Now, concurrent to the freedom of speech is the freedom of the press. Yan. Ano ba yung freedom of press na uh, freedom of the press, sorry, na tinatawag? The information is crucial for every citizen. To formulate well-informed opinion and the mass media is the fastest and most effective way to disseminate information. But today, ano yung issue na nag na, na pumapasok sa ating uh, freedom of the press? It's the fake news, ba? Diba? Some of the of the Filipino don't know how to recognize which one is true and which one is fake. They don't know, hindi lahat, no? Pero some of the citizens nowadays don't know how to fact check. Hindi alam kung reliable ba yung nababasa na mga balita. Is it a reliable source? Galing ba ito sa mga, you know, kapanipaniwalang mga website? Kasi karaniwan, ang bilis maniwala ng tao. Kaya ano an- nangyari? Nagkakaroon ng fad hanggang sa maging trend. ba? Diba? Now, in the Philippines, one of the impediments to fully realize this freedom is the existence of libel. No? Ano ba yung libel? Ito ay kaso. It's a crime broadly characterized by maliciously publishing an article or write-up that may be de- uh, detrimental to a person. So, alimbawa ako ay isang author, isa akong writer, pero siniraan ko ang isang tao dun sa sinusulat ko. Pwede akong makasuha ng kasong libelo. Kasi hindi naman totoo. So kapag nag, nag, nag-disagree yung, yung nakabasa nun, ano, ito yung sinasabi nila na uh, naninirang puro. Naninirang puri. That may, that, it, kasi it, it would cause a dishonor. Dahil sinulat mo yon at nakapublish sa Zario or sa kahit anumang uh, social news article, malimang sa malamang ay pwedeng paniwalaan ito ng karamihan. Kasi mass media eh, with the influence of the mass media. So, sa mga developed countries, yung mga maunlad na bansa, libel, yung kasong libelo, is no longer recognized as a crime. Sa kanila, hindi siya, hindi siya nire-recognize na kaso or krimen since it obstructs the freedom of speech. Another, isa sa mga uh, restriction or difficulty is the alarming rate of media killing and abduct, abduction of the press. Yung mga involved sa journalists, yung mga journalism, ano, yung mga journalist natin. Uh, sa Pilipinas, ano, may mga kaso na nangyari na pinapatay ang mga journalist, mga broadcaster, or even yung mga writer ng mga balita. Dahil nga, yung iba, natatakot sila sa maaring ilathala ng mga journalist natin. Kaya uh, hindi kayo magtataka, uh, yung mga ibang journalist sa bansa natin ay meron talagang threats na natatanggap. Because some of the politicians maybe are trying to offer an under the table transaction para hindi ilathala kung ano yung nalalaman ng mga journalist natin. That's one of the, you know, isa sa mga nakakalungkot na katotohanan na nangyayari sa lipunan. Okay? The, uh, yung pagpatay, the media killings. Okay? Now, what about the pr- uh, pluralism? So, from its root word plural, sabi nila marami, um, A true or authentic democracy is being characterized by pluralism. Sabi nila, yung totoong demokrasya ay merong pluralism. Ano ba yung tinatawag na pluralism? It recognizes the basic rights and freedoms of the citizens. And this entails that the people are entitled to diverse beliefs and opinion. Definitely, may kanya-kanya tayong perspective paniniwala na kung saan sa pamamagitan ng kanya-kanya nating pananaw, ang kanya-kanya nating paniniwala, it creates your own advocacy that could create or that could fall, you know, sa sa isang organization. Kaya nga tayo may mga nabubuong mga iba't ibang organization sa bansa natin kasi may mga kanya-kanya tayong abikain, mga paniniwala, whether religious 
a religious point of view or humanitarian point of view. Halimbawa, yung mga non-government organization natin na kung saan ang purpose talaga nila is to reach out those unreachable na hindi hindi na pupuntahan no karaniwan yung mga non-government organizations natin they contacted the outreach program going to mountains para ipaabot yung tulong dun sa mga kababayan natin na hindi naabutan ng tulong that's one of their purpose now in terms of the diverse diverse beliefs diyan naman pumapasok yung different sect and the religion we have here in the Philippines that You know, these are indication kasi that the presence, by the presence of different, you know, itong mga different point of views natin, perspective, according to our belief, our opinion, our advocacies, ay nagpapahayag lamang ng totoong demokrasya. Okay? So, dahil nga may iba't iba na ganitong pananaw, ito ay nangingibabaw dito ang respeto sa isa't isa, kasi ko ang bawat adhikain ng mga iba't ibang group of people na to ay to, about humanitarian or to reach those unreachable, then there's no issue na pwedeng pag-usapan kasi uh, it varies eh, the trusts and the advocacies of people. So long as yung purpose is about humanitarian reasons, right? So, magkakaiba man ang paniniwala, pero at the end of the day ay nagkakaisa pa rin. There's no problem with that. That's the sign of genuine democracy. There are countries na ganun. May iba-ibang religion involved. Pero paano nagagawa ng gobyerno na meron pa rin pagkakaisa kahit magkakaiba ng reliyon? ba diba? Paano nila nagagawa yun? Unlike in other countries, isa sa mga common war, common reason of their war is, you know, religion. That if you're not a Christian, you'll get that. Diba? May mga ganun issue. So dahil hindi nire-respeto yung ganitong paniniwala, nagkakawata-kwata. At sana hindi mangyari sa ating bansa. Okay? So, these are the six elements in the modern democracy. Now, uh, what are the types of democracy? we have the following. The direct democracy and the indirect democracy. Pag sinabi natin na direct democracy, other term nito is the pure democracy. So, in here, in this type of democracy, the citizens come together to decide on issues. Pangkalahatan. Ibig sabihin, ang taong bayan talaga mismo ang magdedesisyon. Whether a law or a bill would be passed, sa pamamagitan ng pagboto ng taong bayan o hindi. Big sabihin, ang namumuno talaga dito ay ang taong bayan. This may be considered as the ideal. Ideal siya. Ideal democracy since every person, bawat nila lang, bawat individual sa gumagamit ng direct democracy is it as the capacity to participate, to be involved in the decision making, in the voting process that it can ensure that the will of the people is really pa- followed. So, there is really the will of the people. Kasi directly, kami mismo sa taong bayan ang desisyon. At hindi sa kung sino mga representative. Okay? So, ano yung, ano yung, ano, ano pa yung mga dapat nyo pang malaman? Ano bang advantage kapag ka direct democracy? Citizens, bawat mamamayan, has their voice in making important decision in the society. Ano naman ang disadvantage? There's a difficulty to implement sa bawat society. Yung, yung nais nila yung katup- is pag sa ipasakatuparan, lalo na kung malaki ang population. Because of the amount of time needed just to gather lahat ng citizen, doon palang ubos oras na. Diba? So, direct democracy is currently, you know, practiced in Switzerland. Sa cantons o Switzerland. Sa bansa natin, imposible. Napakalaki ng populasyon natin. So, sa dami ba naman ng tao sa bansa natin, baka hindi pa tapos ang araw, hindi, na, hindi pa natin nagagather ang buong sambayanan. Diba? 
So sa atin, malal- mapapractice lang siguro ang direct democracy yung binanggit ko sa inyo kanina. Yung sa pamamagitan ng pagboto ng initiative at referendum. Okay? So yung initiative at referendum, it's it's a manner of taong bayan mismo ang magde-decide. And also the plebiscite, no? Yun yes or no decision. That's it. Alright? Paano naman ang indirect democracy? The indirect democracy was being uh, used by the Philippines na kung saan merong representative. Okay? So, this is also called as representative democracy. Kung ang direct democracy is pure democracy, indirect democracy is about, or other terms, other term nito is the representative democracy. Uh, sa atin, the people, tayo mismo, no, kung, kung ano na kayo mag-elect ng, ng Pangulo or ng mga government officials natin, we elect leaders to act as our representative para maging representative ng ating bansa. During election, ang mamamayan cast their votes for the members of the executive, president, vice president, and the legislative, which is the senators and the congressmen and congresswomen. Now, um, at the same time, the uh, elected officials who somehow represent our country, they are the one who portray, who portray the image of the will of the citizens. Okay? So, sa direct democracy, there is really the practice of the will of the people. However, in the, in the, in the, in the indirect democracy, we have the will of the citizens being represented by our uh, government officials. And they are responsible for passing laws and implementing laws. Ano naman ang advantage ng indirect? It is relatively easier to decide. Diba? Mas madaling mag-decide on a certain issue or a certain law sa pag, you know, pag-i-implement. So, compared sa, sa direct democracy, it takes time to decide. Kasi kung sa pag-gather pa lang ng taong bayan ay ubos oras na, ba? Diba? So, yun ang isa sa advantage ng indirect. There's an easy, uh, you know, madali, ang ad- madali para makapag-decide agad. But what is the disadvantage? So, this, the disadvantage is very difficult for the representatives to consider the will of every citizen. Kasi, uh, dahil nga lang meron tayong representative, hindi lahat ng hinaing ng taong bayan ay mapapakinggan or consider. They must, you know, resort an intelligent decision, an intelligent um, theory, or a guess to decide what they think that everybody or majority of the citizen would benefit. Ano ba yung um, pinakakailangan ng mamamayan? So, yun ang kailangan isa alang-alang. But today, dahil nga indirect democracy tayo, sometimes, dahil nga sila mabilis ang pagpagdesisyon, eh, nakakapag-decide, pero, you know, what is the sense of this laws na inaipapasa? Kadalasan kasi, nagpapasa ng batas, pero wala namang strict implementation. Kung meron man may pasa, wala namang saysay. Hindi naman nakakatulong sa taong bayan, bagkus ay nakakapag worse pa ng situation. So, reflect on those uh, on those scenarios that happen or that currently happen, happen currently happening here in our country. Which one do you think is better? Direct democracy or indirect democracy? So, that's the end of our session about the democratic intervention. I hope you learned something from today's session. Thank you so much.